guys, what is up and welcome back to the channel. So with the release of CMU 1.11.6, we have now been given access to all of its new features. In this video, I'm going to go over absolutely all of these new features and show you exactly how you can use them. Let's quickly jump across to my desktop and get this video started. Okay, so as you can see, here is my CMU 1.11.6 folder. Let's simply launch CMU right now. As you can see, quite a lot has changed since the previous version. If you want to get your games to appear in this games list window right here, you want to come to options, configure game paths, and once you are in this window, you want to double click on this area right here. As you can see, here is the list of my games. However, you do not want to select your games individually. Instead, you want to go to the folder which contains them and select it instead. Once you select it, it should appear right here. Once it appears right here, you can simply click this X and you should now see that your games are appearing. If you have updated them or added any of their DLCs, they will also appear in the window right here. Now that your games are added, you can right click on them, either start them, view your save directory, your update directory, your DLC directory and another handy feature is that you can view your game profile. Once I click on this window, you can see the game profile options right here. I'm simply going to change them to the settings that I use. This accurate shader mull setting I set to min as it uses less RAM and gives me better performance and for GPU buffer cache accuracy I set this to 2 as this is the best setting for Breath of the Wild. Different games require different buffer cache accuracies in order to work to their best potential so you should change yours depending on your game title. In 1.11.6 we have also been given the option to select which recompiler we wish to use for our select game. You will need to enter a section like you see me entering right now. In the section below CPU, you need to type CPU mode equals and then enter whichever recompiler it is you wish to use. For example, for Breath of the Wild, I use the triple core recompiler, so I need to enter triple core dash recompiler. If you wish to use a different recompiler, all you need to do is change triple core to whichever recompiler you wish to use. The options available to us right now are single core interpreter, single core recompiler, dual core recompiler and triple core recompiler. Since I'm going to be using triple core, that's what I'm going to enter. In 1.11.6, we have also been given the option to select whether we want to use RDTSC for our select games. All you need to do is enter a general section like this, and then in the space below general, you need to enter use RDTSC, and then either enter equals true or equals false. This RDTSC setting is mostly useful for games that have major sound errors. Two of the most prominent games that this fixes are Super Smash Bros for Wii U and Pokken Tournament. Since this is the Breath of the Wild profile, I do not want to use RDTSC, so I'm going to set this to false. Once you have your settings set up and everything like you wanted, all you need to do is click file and click save and we are ready to go. When I launch Breath of the Wild, we should see that all of my settings are going to be exactly as I set them. As you can see, we are now currently using the separable shaders. These are the shaders that were introduced in CMU 1.8.0 and have been used ever since. We'll be looking at the shader change in a little while. When we come to CPU mode, you can see that I'm using triple core recompiler. When I come to options and buffer cache accuracy, you can see I am using low and fast. And when I come down to experimental, you can see that use RDTSC has been disabled. This means that our game profile is correctly being read. Okay, let's quickly close CMU once again, and I'm going to show you how you can switch between separable shaders and the older conventional shader system. Let's once again open up our CMU folder and load CMU EXE. Now that CMU is open once again, our games are still being detected. In order to switch which shaders you use, you want to come to experimental and you want to untick this use separable shaders. Once you untick this box, you will be using the older style conventional shader system. When asked over on the official CMU Discord what exactly the purpose was with adding these conventional shaders back in once again, Exap, the lead programmer for CMU Emulator, told us that it is basically an experiment. He wants to see exactly what can be gained by using the older style shaders since they help games like Fatal Frame and Xenoblade Chronicles to run on CMU Emulator. Please be aware that if you do want to use these older conventional shaders for your select games, you are going to need to build a brand new shader cache for that select game. When we open up our CMU folder, come to our shader cache folder and transferable, you can see right here that these are my two different shaders. This top one is my separable shader, and the lower one which has the prefix of underscore J is my conventional shader. 
As you can see, this shader cache is not yet complete. I am going to be completing it in the next few days and seeing exactly what performance is like between conventional and separable shaders in CMU Emulator. Let me know down in the comments which games you would like me to test and compare the performance in when using these two different shader types. So there you go guys, you now know exactly how to use all of these new CMU features. As always, cheers for checking out the video, remember to like it if you liked it, dislike it if you didn't, and subscribe to the channel if you want to see all future videos from me.